this is just the beginning. I want you to go back and look at the previous 10 years and examine the decisions that you made. I want to say thank you to the people who bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training and shout out to the nerd tribe. I want to share a story with you guys. When I was in middle school, when I was coming through school, we had elementary school, which was grades one through six. Then we had middle school grades seven, eight, and nine. And then we had high school 10, 11, 12. And when I was in middle school, one of my friends by the name of Jimmy DiGiovanni, who was very, very smart. He skipped not one, not two, not but three grades. He skipped three grades and academically he could do the work and but socially because this was the time that we as young boys were starting to get interested in girls and Jimmy was three grades ahead so if you kind of remember when you were a kid girls were taller than guys and then it was nothing for someone to disappear for a summer and come back and be three, four, five inches taller. Jimmy was smaller. He was, from a behavior standpoint, delayed, well, not delayed, because he was three, four years younger than everyone else in the grade. And Jimmy was part of my tribe, part of the nerd tribe. And I used to talk to Jimmy, and I didn't know Jimmy as well as I thought I did, because one day, Jimmy doesn't come to school. And we get this message, his mother comes to the school, and they have a they have an organization where all the classes come into the gym and she expressed that Jimmy had committed suicide and you know I talked to Jimmy I actually talked to Jimmy the day before he committed suicide and I had no clue that Jimmy was deeply 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 troubled I feel fortunate that I don't know what it is to be in a situation where I would want to take my life I don't know what that feels like I don't know what that looks like I have no clue to how painful it's got to be a lot of pain for you to think about taking your life and recently DJ Twitch who was on the Ellen show who was only 40 years old married man with children checked into a hotel and shot himself and committed suicide from the outside DJ Twitch his wife Allison uh, she has a huge Instagram follow following there are many videos on her Instagram. I didn't check his Instagram out of them dancing. Literally, this guy recently had a birthday and I don't know what dark, dark demons was plaguing Twitch. And I'm quite sure as an experience of knowing someone, talking to someone shortly before they committed suicide and having no clue that this person was in such agony. And I'm quite sure his wife had no clue where he was. If she knew, I think she would have got him all the help that she could have. But I want you to think, here's someone who was famous, wealthy, married. He had anything that anybody who wanted to have a successful life, this guy had it and he committed suicide. There was a uh, rock star by the name of Kurt Cobain years ago. Kurt Cobain, life was better than Twitch's. He was a rock star, Nirvana. He killed himself. A few years ago, his daughter got like, like $120 million from his estate. And I want you guys to understand, it's Christmas, it's the holidays, and this is when the suicide rate skyrockets. I just gave you two examples of people who from the outside looking in, there would be no reason for them to kill themselves from the outside looking in. But we don't know what's going on on the inside of these people. Now, this is real bright line example of of people you would not expect to commit suicide. I'm about to go over to another side. We have a surging homelessness rate. We have a surging population that's getting laid off. We have people who have been priced out of the home market. They cannot afford a home, even though they may have good credit and money down, they still can't buy a house. So we're entering a, a phase where we're going to have a bunch 
of desperate people and the case of someone who was homeless. And I'm going to say something that many of you may not be aware of. There are people who have not recovered from the last recession. There are companies whose stock price has plummeted and they've never returned to former all time highs. We have people who are on the precipice of disaster, the precipice of calamity. And once again, the twitches and the Kurt Cobain's people you would never expect to commit suicide right now on a wholesale level. We have a ton of people who are on the edge of suicide. They're depressed. They're stress stressed and they're struggling and their their lives are not going the way that you would expect, nor did they expect. And we have this amplifier of the good life, social media, which I understand can make a person who's in a depressed state, a struggling state, stressed out state, it can make it worse. When I started on YouTube, I was really big about showing receipts. I showed you guys my Stripe account, showed you checking accounts, showed you pay stubs, showed you um, ATM receipts. And I understand now that doing that in front of a bunch of broke, struggling, hapless people, it's not the thing to do. And that's one of the reasons I stopped because um, the real estate trapper, he was someone that was very big on showing receipts, showing proof of his thesis, of the things that he was talking about and showing the proof. And just like I got a lot of hate, he got a lot of hate. He got a ton of hate. And with my understanding of the real estate trapper, Rapper, he thought, like I thought, that showing people proof, receipts, that is, once again, my whole goal was this, was to show you that it was possible to be successful. We have a group of people who are so hopeless. I was watching a video, a guy got out of a Corvette and he keyed a Tesla that he parked next to it because he was just a nasty person. And one of the things that I am be beginning to understand with what I know about people and the people in my orbit that these are the dark, dark days of Christmas. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. We are in a recession. There's numerous agencies that keep saying we're not in a recession, but we're in a recession. But we're in a weird recession because we have extremely low unemployment because I was reading the article. A lot of men are dropping out of these dead end jobs because they feel that what they do for a living deeply impacts their overall life in terms of living, getting women. They're literally checking out. They're checking out. And so many people are checking out. They're not participating in the great American dream. They're checking out. They're, and what I'm beginning to understand, like the person that I know who was living in a house last year and now is homeless, in her state of desperation, she met someone in August and she married him in August because she was lonely, desperate, broke, and depressed. If you have those four elements in your life, your decision making isn't the best. And she married this dude and he began to beat her. And all I can do is stand on the side and watch this because uh, I'm gonna explain why I didn't get involved. And I've had numerous women try to move in with me and why I never allowed these women Women to move in with me. My life is really, really good. And I don't want my good life contaminated by people who have, because once again, my heart goes out for anyone who's been evicted, who's homeless, who's struggling. When I see people on the side of the streets holding up these signs, my first question is, how did you get here? So I have compassion. I have empathy for these people. But this is where the strong cocaine comes in. I know for every person who's on the side of the the road begging for money. I know in the case of this woman, one of the reasons that I did not step in was I have seen how relationships go. You would think 
that if you were to rescue someone from homelessness and you were to help someone out, that there would be nothing but love. The opposite is true. There would be nothing but contempt. There would be nothing but anger. And often these people that you try to help will try to bring you down because they're not they're not in a good place. They're not doing well. And this is why I have learned my lesson. I will never, ever allow a woman who's in a very bad financial situation to move in with me because I know what's going to happen and it's not going to be good. It's just not going to be good. Now, my girlfriend lives with me, but guess what? My girlfriend has a job. My girlfriend has an 820 credit score. She has a paid off car. See, when you extend something to someone who's in a good position, there's not this anger. There's not this resentment. There's not this hate. There's not this I'll share a story with you. And this is where I learned this lesson. I did once, once allow someone who was struggling to move in with me and it got physical. This chick attacked me. All it took is once, once. I learned my lesson because you would have thought there was comments that were made. There were certain things that were made and it was just the resentment that and I, like she had to go. I actually threw her out because she was messing up my harmonious life. I didn't have, I, I don't struggle. I don't stress, but that was her life. And she was trying to bring that into my life. And I was just like, I wasn't having it. And I literally, and this, this was why I had to change the locks because I threw her out and somehow she had an extra key and she would come into my place when I was gone. So I had to change the locks and I get a message from her why'd you change the locks it was crazy it was crazy and i was like i will never ever let someone in a bad financial situation move in with me it ain't happening because see people who are broke lonely stressed out and struggling do not make the best decisions like i'm telling you because there were some comments like you know she was homeless why didn't you help her out see here's the thing for every person going back to what i was saying that's standing on the side of the street for every person that gets it's evicted, every person that's homeless, there is going to be a myriad of bad decisions. You don't go homeless from one bad decision. You don't go homeless from two bad decisions. You don't go homeless from three bad decisions. You go homeless from multiple bad decisions. Case in point, the homeless chick. If I had known her situation, if I had knew her, I would have convinced her not to quit her job because I would have worked the math. And I was, but once again, that was a bad decision. Decision compounded by quitting your job, drawing down your 401k, not working, spending money like her. I mean, it was just many, 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 many bad decisions. And this, once again, meeting this dude in August and getting married, bad decision. And I don't have any Captain Save a Hole energy. I have none. I have no Captain Save a Hole blood. I have no Captain, none. Because I have had to learn the hard way that when people are broke, stressed out and struggling. If you sit down and talk to them and you ask the right questions, you will figure out why they are where they are. It will become quite evident. And this is why, once again, there was this one girl who had the best pussy in the world. Number one, in terms of me having sex, number one. Outside the bedroom, the relationship was a dumpster fire. And I was fortunately wise enough to get rid of her because here's the thing. Sex is important. Sex makes a relationship great. But sex without good sex, without the good relationship, without the friendship, without, you know, uh, there's times that my girlfriend can be up in here. I won't even talk to her all day. And that's cool. She doesn't need for me to talk to her all the time. She has her own activity. She does her own thing. And then, you know, go to bed, meet at night. It's all nothing but love. But what I'm getting to is how we started off depression suicide when someone has a bad life it's not one simple situation it's not one simple thing it is a always is always a combination of bad choices and this is one of the reasons that i have been able to find sane sensible loving and submissive women because I know what to look for. I know what to look for. I don't date women for y'all. I date women for me. I don't really care if y'all think my girlfriend is cute, even though she's cute as a button. I really don't care. As long as 
I feel she's cute. That's the only thing that matters. And this is how I have avoided, for the most part, a lot of drama in my life because these are the dark days of Christmas and you guys have got to be on alert. You guys have got like the ex that lived with me. Guess what? She was trying to get me to do something for her two months before she married another dude. I can already tell you that marriage is going to end in divorce. I'm not wishing anything bad on her. I just know the situation. She married a dude that got a girl pregnant. But once again, so you married this dude who has a baby who is not even a Eight months old and you marry them very quickly once again you will see time and time again that when people get themselves in trouble and I'm not talking about children if you're under 18 and you live with your parents I'm not talking about you but if you're 30 years old and you're broke you're desperate you're struggling I want you to go back and look at the previous 10 years and examine the decisions that you made and I guarantee you you're gonna see a lot of bad decisions you're gonna see a lot of bad decisions over and over and over and it's just once again in 2023 everything that you're seeing in the end of 2022 is going to be 10x it's going to get worse we're going to have more depressions we're going to have more crime we're going to have more suicides we're going to have a lot of bad outcomes for a lot of people these are the dark days of christmas